My name is Angel Paz, and I'm with Kennesaw Gynecology as a physician, and I'm here today to talk to you about urinary incontinence. Are you bothered by leakage of urine when you're sneezing, laughing, or coughing? Are you embarrassed when you're at the gym and you might leak urine while you're exercising? If so, this talk is for you. I'm here to talk about it because it affects a wide array of women. 5% of 20-year-olds have urinary incontinence, and this affects us all the way throughout our postmenopausal years. It affects us in many ways. It may change what we eat or we drink. It may affect how we exercise or we may even avoid exercise altogether. And it does this in many different ways. It affects our quality of life, bottom line. And because of this, many different things have been developed. Medications, for example. Most medications that treat urinary incontinence are, have side effects. The side effects that they have include dry mouth, constipation, um, dry eyes, and because of this, compliance becomes an issue. Um, another thing that people try are Kegel exercises. This is encouraged oftentimes after childbirth. Kegel exercises are oftentimes effective when the skeletal tissue is relaxed and there might be stress or urinary incontinence. Kegel exercises become a nuisance and more cumbersome over time. And so compliance, again, becomes an issue. And sometimes they're effective, but over time they might not be. Time voiding is something that might be discussed with you and your physician. Time voiding is something where a patient is encouraged to plan going to the bathroom at certain intervals of time, whether it's 45 minutes apart, an hour, an hour and a half, to try to retrain your bladder, which is in fact a muscle. Um, this is great, but for some women, such as teachers, and many of us are, um, that's impractical. We have busy lives, and to do that is an impractical thing. Um, surgery becomes another option. Uh, the placement of mesh uh, is performed by certain physicians uh, underneath the right urethra to support the urethra and minimize that leakage of urine when we laugh, sneeze, cough, or exercise. So to avoid surgery and some of these other options, today I would like to discuss the OSHA. This is not new, um, but it does involve a proprietary method of the use of PRP. PRP is platelet-rich plasma. And when patients come to my office to have the O shot, uh, we withdraw blood from their arm, and we place it in this tube, and using a special type of centrifuge, it separates red blood cells from your platelet-rich plasma. And using the platelet-rich plasma portion, we introduce that part into the area between the bladder and the vagina. And in doing so, it bolsters support underneath the urethra, it increases blood supply by in improving vascularization, it improves collagen formation, and increases growth factors. And all of that does the following. It improves, min it minimizes urinary incontinence, it increases vaginal lubrication, it actually it even enhances sexual um, desire and sexual functioning in women and decreases pain with intercourse. So it has a lot of positive benefits. More than 9,000 papers in this country have been researched and written about platelet-rich plasma and its use in patients, and not one serious adverse event has been reported. Um, so because of this, I'd like to offer this to my patient as a possible um, option in treating these issues, and because of the side effects that it does have, which are positive, um, and in my course of business, being a gynecologist, I feel like it's my responsibility to offer these things to my patients in this community. So if you're interested, or you have a friend that might benefit from this, please don't hesitate to call my office. Our number is 470-308-3365. Have a great day.